Evening, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of RFL. I'm Richard French, and joining us for this New Year's Eve special edition, well, we begin with a look back on a strong political year on the national level and certainly the very various challenges that our country faced in terms of everything from mass shootings, Ebola scares, extreme weather, and certainly stuff that we've seen on the state level, including some major legislative actions that would have been unthinkable just a few years ago. So here first, a look back at the news that made headlines in 2014. Major cities falling under their black flag, fueled by ruthlessness and religious zeal. We will degrade and ultimately destroy ISIL. U.S. fighter jets and drones launching a series of airstrikes. Kasich, the third American to be murdered by ISIS since August. Israeli airstrikes on Gaza light up the night sky. Soon after, Hamas launched the most rockets yet on Tel Aviv. There are dozens of bodies in the streets. We hope very much that this ceasefire will prove to be durable and sustainable. <laughs> Unthinkable horror. More than 130 students killed during a siege at this army-run school in Pakistan. The Malaysia Airlines flight was bound from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing when all contact was lost. Heart rate for hundreds of families. Another day in a frustrating search for clues. Tonight, Kiev is burning. Crimea is Ukrainian territory. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a document to formally annex Crimea. Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 down. Strong evidence a Russian-made missile brought down the plane. There has never been a time in the history of Ebola when it has spread so fast and these countries do not have the capacity to contain it. It was the news America had been dreading. An individual has been diagnosed with Ebola in the United States. It is not news that should bring about panic. It's an eerily familiar scene. At least four are dead. We're heartbroken. A premeditated mass murder. Roger carried out his day of retribution. When will this insanity stop? Information of a possible shooting at the high school in the cafeteria. No probable cause exists to file any charge. A grand jury said Daniel Pantaleo did nothing illegal. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! Protests growing nationwide. Can't stop the revolution! If they don't see this and make a change, then I don't know what we gotta do. It's coming right at us, Jim. I don't see how anybody could live through that. We're looking at a catastrophic event here. I just saw the darkies. 484 football fields, all mud. This is a firestorm beyond human imagination. Entire neighborhoods now reduced to ash. It is a dangerous, dangerous situation. Can you imagine living like this for six days and counting? The most cars recalled by a single car company in a year ever. She didn't need to die. The complicated, confusing airbag recall exploding with too much force. I thought I was gonna die. I was foggy. The next thing I remember is waking up in bed. The man once known as America's dad is under fire. Cosby's lawyers called the women's claims old and discredited. Sony canceling the release of its controversial comedy, The Interview, an unprecedented response to a major cyber attack and threats against moviegoers. There is a problem of humanitarian proportions. President Obama says he must fix a broken immigration system. You can come out of the shadows and get right with the law. They have no business to treat them like animals and delay their care. 40 veterans died at this VA hospital. And Saki offered me his own resignation. You have done a disservice to the President of the United States. Julia Pearson today offered her resignation. Today's decision will change the lives of thousands of loving couples. It was a momentous and an historic moment for all of us. History in the making. Here is your marijuana, sir. The shelves stopped. One of the first sales of recreational marijuana in the country. It smells good in here, that's for sure. You know, you don't have to go worry about getting in trouble for it. We're ready to accomplish much, much more. Airborne for only seconds before it erupted. The aircraft meant to fly tourists into space exploded in midair, dreams of flight in pieces in the sand. We must push on. We definitely confirmed that the lander is on the surface. And liftoff, the dawn of Orion and a new era of American space exploration.
right, let's bring in our panel right now. Jeannie Zane, a professor of political science at Iona College, professor of campaign management at NYU. Resplendent, for easy for me to say. And Luke, <laughs> Dominic Thank Carter, you. political journalist and author. And Punching it with that bow tie. Oh, I don't know. I, let's not go that far. <laughs> Ellis Hennekin here, columnist for Newsday, political analyst, author, the voice of Stormy on the hit cartoon <laughs> network series, See a Lab 2021. 2021, what doesn't he do in Andrew Whitman? <laughs> Our waiter for the evening here and senior oh. political correspondent. <laughs> looking sharp, looking sharp. Can I get okay. you? <laughs> um, there was a lot of uh, stuff that we just touched on um, in there, and we'll go through them. But if there was one issue that really, uh, you know, for you defined this past year, what do you think it would be? Um, I think it's distrust of all our governmental institutions. For me, I think that's the biggest issue in American politics today, and certainly this year we saw a, a lot of that. You know, you just look at the turnout in the 2014 midterm. You look at something like Ebola, which you mentioned in that piece, and you look at how people responded when they felt like the government wasn't addressing it. So I think distrust is an enormously difficult issue to address, but I think it's the problem of the year. You know, Tom, we're going to talk about a lot of the election consequences, both on the national, regional level in a little bit. But beyond just the politics of, I think Jeannie hit it, this distrust, but was there another story also for you that said, you know what, this in many ways was what defined 2014 for me? Clearly, the year of the Republican. Uh, they showed, number one, the party, discipline. They didn't run candidates to the far, 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 far right and then off the cliff that hurt the party as a whole. They ran more... Uh, uh, moderate candidates in terms of the Republican Party that could get elected, and they were extremely successful in 2014. Yes, a midterm election, but they were still successful. Bad year, if you will, for the president, great year for the Republicans. You know, Andrew, we talk a lot about um, state politics uh, in the show, whether it's New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and certainly look at the national level, but you got an idea about states' rights here. If people needed a civics lesson, whether it was marijuana laws in different parts of this country, gun laws so radically different, whether you lived in New York or a different state in this country, it really was all over the map. And, of course, then you talk about gay marriage. Yeah, it seems like we're, we're becoming less of, of one entity, and, and really the states' rights push seems to be the direction that everything's going in, the issues that you hit, and there are so many others. Um, I, and I think part of that's it, what my answer would have been uh, when asking what the big question of the year was, because the knee-jerk way that we went from crisis to crisis just seemed to be all over the place. The Malaysian plane and Syria with chemical weapons, and then Ebola was the classic example where it's the worst thing ever. What are we going to do? Everything's failing us, and then within a couple of weeks, not a big deal anymore. We just seem to lurch from crisis to crisis, a lot of it politically motivated, and, and I think that feeds into what Jeannie was saying about a lack of trust. And also, I think it's... Um what we're on right now, uh, the boob tube, and, and what drives this. And forget about 24 hour cycles, Ellis. It seems like uh, on a 15 minute basis, if you don't, if it doesn't have screaming breaking news to it, you don't captivate the national attention anymore. And that drives a lot of this. Uh, I'm curious for you, was there something um, that really for you was this past year in a nutshell? Oh, well, finally, my time has arrived. The short attention span <laughs> era. This is, I've been fighting this my whole life. It turns out it's now an advantage, right? Right? Wait, I'm sorry, what to were you know, saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to know this much about anything is actually an important an important skill. Uh, I think seriously, the three of you together added up right. It is in, in in fact, we are at a time of tremendous dysfunction, as as Jeannie was pointing out at the very beginning. So much of what is happening, what is interesting, is the reaction to that dis dysfunction. Uh, whether it's local governments uh, taking action, whether it's the president Dominic finally stirring and doing some stuff. You know, for for six years, his supporters have been wondering when it is that Barack Obama was going to to reach the activism and the promise of his original campaign. Well, hold on tight. That may be coming now. <laughs> and maybe, maybe we can figure out, despite all this dysfunction, how do we actually address the problems of Americans? That's the big question this year, and it's going to come again next. And you know, for Jeannie, for me, there was, I'm not trying to get deep here, but in some ways, we are instantaneous in our reaction. Look at social media right now, and that right away, you'll get instant reaction to reaction and everything else. But that 
But at the same time, there was a level of not just frustration, but almost helplessness when folks, when they looked at some of the extremists around the world here. We talked about some of the tragic mass shootings that happened. That would, There was no rational explanation for any of this. And, and what can you do to stop these things? And it transported itself from not just here in the States, but things that we saw you know, all over the globe, whether it would be Canada or Australia here, or certainly what we saw in the Far East. And this idea of uh, that ISIS, this four-letter anachronism now, it doesn't just fit in this neat little pocket. And what can we really do to stop all this? Uh, there was a little bit, I find, of, of a yin and a yang about people that want everything right now, and then people also see something happening around the globe, and not really wondering if it's A, our fight, or B, if that's something we even can do something about. It, it's conflicting. I know you see students every day here, and you deal with some of these subjects. It's a tough it's a tough thing to navigate in the digital age. Yeah, it absolutely is. And there's a sense of hopelessness as you look at, you know, as you mentioned, I, you know, ISIS. And um, my students were, you know, constantly focused on the beheadings that occurred throughout the fall. And, you know, what, what did it mean? Why was it happening? Why couldn't the United States stop it? And then you look at things that have happened more recently, what, like what happened in Pakistan to those poor children in that school. And, and even the Sony hacking. I mean, so many things that the government and our institutions seem unable to stop, unable to address. And I think that does give people this sense of uncertainty. So when you look at polls, and you and I always talk about polls, and you see the economy is much, much better than it was when President Obama took office, and yet he doesn't get the credit for it. I always think it's because there's a sense that people have of uncertainty about what's going to come next, and will their, ch will their children really have a better life than they have now? And I think there's an awful lot of uncertainty out there because of these events that seem to be happening so fast. And as Andrew mentioned, you know, you hear them on a 10, 15 minute cycle and then they're gone and the next really, really, you know, crisis issue has hit us and we don't know how to address that. And so I think that it adds up. And unfortunately, I have to say, and we talked about this in the midterm for students and young people, sometimes they check out. Sometimes they say, oh, it's not worth voting. You know, it's not worth participating. In the midterm election, I can tell you at a class of 50, you'd have, you know, two or three or four students who had voted in the midterm election election. Granted, we're in New York and there wasn't a lot to go to the polls for, but, you know, turnout is very low and I think part of it is they're checking out and feeling the sense of inefficacy and that it not, doesn't matter. It's not just students. I think it, more and yeah, more people, agree, yeah. even beyond college age, are, are checking out. It's You see the voting numbers that are down and we had really bad numbers for the, the midterm elections overall. Is, is, isn't that our fault, though? I, I to mean, a certain honestly, degree. you know, if, if politicians are failing to speak to people in ways that motivate your kids and in the media, news shows, too many of them don't speak to the stuff that people care about. God, we got to do better at that, yeah. don't we? Don't it's a, it's two-way street, though, Ellis, because people want the information, they want the entertainment that appeals to them. Mm -hmm. They want to go to the, the news sources that appeal to them. And so at the same mm -hmm. time, the news sources start feeding people what they think they want to hear. That's you true. know, I was at um, West Point not long ago, um, and I happened to run into um, a veteran that we had done a lot of stuff that was on Omaha Beach on D-Day. Mm. Um, and uh, the conversation got around to, he said, you know, there's less shared interest now than there was when we were there. Now, for good and for bad. I mean, one of the best things about this country is everybody gets to have their opinion. That's a, that's a terrific thing. But at the same end, we didn't thankfully have a tragedy. But you have to go back to 9-11 to the last sense that this country had that cohesiveness. And we saw an issue after an issue this year where there's so much, not just dysfunction, but polarization. It almost won. The, the issues, you almost staked out the winning side if you pick the farthest end and to meet in the middle is getting harder and harder. We'll talk much more about that as we go over the hour, but certainly um, elections uh, were a huge part of this year, both on the local level and on the national level. When we come back, we'll talk about the 2014 national elections and how they changed the political landscape. <laughs> 